which is either m is equal to 2 or m is equal to 0. For the case m is equal to 0, you're plugging m is equal to 0 into those three expressions. Uh, maybe if you want to see that expressions again. See, that's alpha, right? You remember, in this case, m is equal to 0. Uh, sorry, alpha is equal to 0, m is equal to 2, or m is equal to 0. So I'm plugging m is equal to 2, m is equal to 0, and I uh, don't know why there is a minus 3 there. I'm not supposed to have minus 3. Hmm. m is equal to 0. I guess we just have to carry out on the same. Well, you know that when m is equal to 2, alpha is equal to 0. And then, that's, then you have singular solutions instead of non-singular ones. This one, these two are really easy because they're just going to be constants. I mean, the solution of this xi is just going to be constant. Can you see why? Beta, beta is a constant. Oh, right, yeah. Beta is a constant, and then xi has the same degree as beta, so xi must also be a constant. So this is a constant. For that one, xi doesn't have to have the same degree as beta because they don't exist uh, in the same position. So you integrate that expression in the, same, in the normal way where you integrate an expression to get that. Mm. The last two equations is that, yeah. Uh, if the vectors of A are multiplied by the respective solutions and summed, we get this. So that's our final expression for P1, Q0, and R0. And you build up to get you P2, Q1, and R1, P3, Q2, and RQ, which I'm not going to show here. And the result is this. So Q minus 2, R minus 2 is going to be those, which should be familiar to you, which we saw just now. And uh, these are P minus 1, Q minus 1, R minus 1 results. And we, this table ends at P4, so you have an idea what um, the coefficients of your psi series going to look, are going to look like. And you can see that this is not completely independent of anything else. You have got a C and an eta and a D here, which are not specified. You've got to specify this using the properties of the system you have, which is uh, the other two things. You remember at the beginning I sh when I showed you the original differential equation called sigma C in it, and we've got rho in it, and we've got to specify those using C and Ds. And the theorem that this paper concluded and uh, uh, found out was the psi series, some of whose coefficients are listed in table 1 for 1, which the table I showed you just now, they satisfy the Lorentz system, which was the original differential equations that we wanted to solve, in the disk t minus t naught is smaller than r, which is to say that when time, when, when you focus on some time t naught, and when time goes back an amount r, and goes forward an amount r, the solution would work in that time area uh, for some i is bigger than zero. But with the singular point, t is going to say that's uh, supposed to be a, super, a subscript, t naught. Uh, that is when time is on that time point and a branch cut deleted from the disk. Constants t and d are undetermined. Yeah, I think that's pretty much it. So you've solved the psi series. Um, I read to you the conclusion of that paper. Which also proves that they were actually using the Lorentz series, because now they refer to yeah. the branch cut and means yes. that. I mean, there might be some stuff like that for psi series too. But I think that this psi series is just a particular type of Lorentz series. Ah, yeah. Yeah, it must be these powers of minus one, mm -hmm. and that's what happens in the negative. Yeah, I've never, I've, I didn't check out what size series is. It gave you a definition of size series which I showed you at the beginning, and I didn't check it out on Wikipedia. It says, uh, we have given a complete formal development of singularity to the complex T plane, T means time. Proved convergence of the size series, which I didn't do to you, it's quite complicated. Representations using a new technique, and proved 
that the Psi series satisfied the Lorentz system. So they actually find an analytical expression for the Lorentz system. So that's about it. Have you got questions? How does the solution look like? Uh, the solution looks like. Uh, it's not what you've shown us before. Yeah. But these numbers. Okay. Yeah. You remember? Because they are singular solutions. I'm assuming they look peculiar. Well, is it not just that's, attractive? That's what the solutions look like, right? Do you remember the horrible table I showed you? But on which the graph, I mean. On the graph. The graph would be the same. I, I, they didn't talk about what the graph would look like. They didn't mm -hmm. talk about that. But I'm sure when they write down that we have solved this and you need this satisfied the equation, they must have thought it and it turned out to be the same as numerical solution. So the solution looks like this. Because they are not general solutions. That, that's the point. The, oh yeah, they talked about whether these solutions are general solutions, whether they've left out any other possibilities. So what have they left? Mm, well, they are not conclusive on that one, so uh -huh. they might have left out something. Well, I mean, they've, sho they, they've shown that, that they converge on, on within the unit disk, so at least in this small region they, they work. So it's just some... some but like, like solutions that work. Well, this work in, in a small region, which means that they work for a short time. That's like with weather predi prediction. You, you know how the system is going to behave, but on a very short time scale, which is governed uh, by... Uh, so it doesn't include the butterfly stuff? No, it doesn't. It, it just includes the beginning. It, right? Yeah, it's very short time, very minus T0. Mm -hmm. It's connected to the Lyapunov exponent of the Jacobian matrix, which defines the... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah it's, it's a bit <laughs> for 